Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the X-Racer X1 brushed quadcopter. It has a built-in 48 channels 5.8 G VTX and it has also a built-in FR Sky receiver inside the flight controller. I'm getting the product inside this nice pouch so all the accessories and the quadcopter are included inside. First we're getting the quadcopter. It has this flexible frame that was a little bit bent during the shipping process so it just came like that but it's fine and it can be twisted because of the structure of the plastic. In addition we get two sets of propellers. One is a spare one and one needs to be installed on the quadcopter. In the set only one battery was included. This is a 1S HV battery which means it can be charged up to 4.35 volt with the included charging. Just to remind you, a regular LiPo battery is charged up to 4.2 volt per cell. In addition, we're getting these stickers and that's about it. The canopy of the quadcopter is just removed by simply lifting it up. And you can see that the camera is not well secured. So you will have to secure it properly, for example, using a glue or a rubber band. On the top, we have the VTX. In order to switch the channels, we have this button on the side. After we turn it on, we'll see how it works. And on the back of the quadcopter, we have the micro USB port that enables you to configure it through Betaflight or CleanFlight. In order to bind the x X1 to your Taranis, just put the receiver mode on D8, channels 1 to 8, then hit bind. But before that, I want to show you that there are two bind buttons here. One is located here. And the other one is located here, this is the RC bind button. So don't be fooled, don't use this button, you will have to use this button over here that located in the front. So what you need to do, just hit bind. And then just connect the battery while holding this button over here. Then you can just disconnect the battery hit exit and the binding process has been finished. Changing the VTX channel is done by pressing this button here on the side. Short pressing it changes the channel. So we have one is the for the right, eight is the for the left. And if we long press it, it's going to change the frequency. So A, B, E, F and R. So I'm going to put it on F seven and when you reconnect the battery the last channel is saved let's run a quick scan just to make sure we are on the right channel so let's scan it okay so we're good the right band was 58 60, 60 so we are good to go and by the way in case you are wondering there is no osd feature in this quadcopter in addition, the included camera is a PAL camera, so if your image is flickering, try to switch between PAL to NTSC in the settings of your goggles. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery is 28.1 grams, and if we add in the battery, is 34.5 grams. So this is an extremely light quadcopter, and I'm really looking forward to how it will perform indoors, and maybe you can get some outdoor action as well with this little thing, although I don't think in high winds it's going to perform that well. In order to fix the issue with the camera that is not well mounted, and I'm pretty surprised they are selling this quadcopter the way it is, I'm going to use this silicone glue. So let's just put a little bit of silicone glue on the bottom. And now we're going to wait for it to dry. And then I'm going to show you the settings on clean flight. And of course, take it for a short test flight. In the meantime, I'm going to charge the battery. You can see when you plug it to a USB port, this red indicator is on. And when you're going to connect the battery, the LED indicator will be turned off, which means now it's charging. Once the charging process is finished, this LED indicator will be turned back on. Take into consideration that if you're using an external charger, this is an HV battery, so you should put it on HV mode if your charger supports that mode. So after the silicone glue got dried, I think now it's much more secured. If you want to secure it a little better, you can add some dental floss wire and then I think it's going to hold better. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to connect it to Beta Flight, see that all the settings are correct, and take it for a test flight. I hope. Overall, I think the X-Racer X1 is an excellent brushed quadcopter. It's viewable, it's light, the flight time is pretty good, the image quality is good, and the main downsides are that there is no built-in buzzer and OSD, so it means it's going to be a little bit hard for you to find the quadcopter and also to know when the battery is going to run out. The included case is also very nice because you can just put it inside with some spare props, and take it on the go along with your Taranis and then you can have some indoor FPV action wherever you're going. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the X-Racer X1, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.